fascinating rhythm It's wonderful Long ago and far away Isn't it a pity Shall we dance How long has this been going on? Jocko Sims stars as Dr. Floyd Reynolds on the NBC drama New Amsterdam. Sims is an actor, writer, producer with roles in numerous films and television projects, including Dreamgirls, Jarhead, and 2014's summer box office smash, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. His first series was a lead opposite Dennis Hopper in the star's original series, Crash. For five seasons, he starred as Lieutenant Carlton Burke in the TNT network hit, The Last Ship. Sims portrayed Robert Franklin during Showtime's second season of Masters of Sex, and he's recurred and or guest starred on several TV shows, including Grey's Anatomy, Franklin and Bash, Castle, Burn Notice, CSI, and so many more. I mean, this list goes on and on, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, my good friend, Jocko Sims. What is oh, going man. on, brother? Uh, I'm good now after that intro, brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, brother. <laughs> hey, man. I had to set it flies. up. <laughs> I had to set it I up. I appreciate man. it, man. You've been, you have been busy. Uh, we have to give people some context uh regarding how you and I met. And this is this is a great story. I, I don't know if you remember this story, but I gotta tell yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. So we met on a Showtime show, Masters of Sex. Wonderful mm -hmm. show. Focus off St. Louis. We now have to re-energize our base. It's like we had a sight for a few months and suddenly we had a mind. Hmm? Welcome home. I auditioned for the role that you got. And <laughs> And I have to say, I think I said to you at Craft Services, because I, cause, cause I didn't know who had got the role. And when I met you, man, I was so happy to just, mm. you know, meet the dude who, who, you know, for me, it wasn't like, you know, a thing. It was like, I want to meet this brother, right? Because this was a great mm. role. And I was happy with the role mm. I got. It was, it was wonderful, man. Mm. And mm -hmm. I have to say, Jocko, a few things I observed about you. Mm. Your professionalism, your poise, oh. and your technique as an actor. Mm. And you know, and this was my first guest starring role on a on a mm. show. But for you, mm -hmm. this was a big opportunity that you smashed. And I just want to, I just want to give you that affirmation, brother, because I was observing the work, and we didn't get to talk about it because we were in it ourselves doing our right. thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I well, first of all, uh, I, I I do remember, and uh, I, I really enjoyed my time with you there in particular. You were uh, probably maybe unbeknownst to you, you were you you were that comfort to mm. know that I had a, a brother there supporting me. Mm. I always felt your energy, my man. Mm. Um, we uh, played brothers who were in the uh, core Congress mm. of Racial Equality because um, my, my character was a, a civil rights uh, leader and, your, and your, your character as well. And so we came together and we were working, working hard to try to uh, bring about some change back in the 50s and 60s in St. Louis. Um, but it was just everything from that production was fantastic. It started with the writing. Um, and uh, Michelle Ashford, who created the show, was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I know you've, I think you've had Ann Crabtree on, on your show, yeah. uh, and she was great with their wardrobe, and they just did a, a wonderful job of transforming us and, and putting us uh, in, in that world. Yeah. And it was just fantastic. What was really cool for, for, for me, I got a, well, a couple stories. Number one, that, that's the first time I met uh, uh, Sterling K. Brown before he became a, a, a god. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I, I think he might audition for uh, the role as well, uh, Robert Franklin. I'm not sure. I got to look into that. I'd like to, I'd like to hope so. Because <laughs> that brother is a beast. And I remember we did one scene together yeah. in one of the episodes. And he was just, uh, I, I, I knew then. It was just effortless. He had a small thing to do, played a lawyer. 
but uh, he he was just just smooth with it. And I got to know him, and he told me he had a theater background and all that. Next thing I know, I see him on the O.J. Simpson story, bam, knocking that roll out of the park. And then, of course, this is us. So uh, kudos to that, brother. But it's moments like that where you can come together on yeah. a show, and when you have an opportunity like that, being in an ensemble situation yeah. where you get to do that. And one more quick thing about that uh, about that role. I remember Jamie uh, Radolski, when Radolski was a casting director out yep. in Los Angeles. Yeah, uh, I first met her. Gosh, I want to say somewhere around two thousand and four. Mm-hmm. I think it was, and I auditioned for a pilot that she was doing, and uh, always had a good team. And I, I can get in the door, but you know, I'm starting out, and I you, I just know some of these roles just not gonna go my way. But you know, I would always go in there and try to wreck it. So. I went in and auditioned for Jamie Rodowski. It was a, it was a, some pilot. It was the lead of a pilot, and I put in my my hard time. It's long monologue. It got to dig into it, and I kill it. And she goes, "Wow, that was, that was amazing. That was the best way I've seen it done. You're you're not getting a callback, but that was, wow." <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh, damn," <laughs> you know. So I, you know, being a I, I don't think they were giving brothers as much of a chance then to be a lead mm-hmm. on an ABC show or whatever it was, especially an unknown. But uh, she never forgot me. Mm. And fast forward to 10 years later, I walk in to audition for Masters of Sex. And I was expecting to see another casting director who was the main casting director on there. And she wasn't there. In fact, it was Jamie Rodolsky. And I yeah. walked in. I said, oh, my God. She said, hey, Jocko, we picked up right where we left off. And I'm telling you, I dug into that that audition. And it was just so... And, and I don't know, just great for me to feel that come full circle. Yes. You know, 10 years later, here I was uh, sinking my teeth into a role. And and then I get to get to get to get chosen for it was it was just a fantastic experience. Man. So yeah. shout out to Jamie. Same, shout out to Jamie. You know, a few years prior to, to that audition for that role, uh, I auditioned for Jamie in a play. Mm. In a play called Who Do Love, written by Katori Hall. Now, okay. I, I had played uh, the role of Ace of Spades, and there was another production. So I walked in confident that I was going to get this, this one as well. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> and Jamie was, was the casting director. And, oh, uh, wow. You know, and, and so I, I didn't get that particular production, which was, which was fine, because I think, you know, obviously, you know how, how casting goes. But yeah. the audition went super well. Mm. So like you, when I walked in, there she mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I'm glad you brought her up in particular because she creates a condition for you to do your best work. Yeah, she does. It, just the vibe, right? This is the vibe. Mm-hmm. And, and she's like, you, you just know that like, she's rooting for you. And you, you know you don't always Absolutely. feel that, uh, that energy. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that comfortability, and I, and I just thought, you know what? Yeah, this is this is this is awesome. And, and I and I and I did my thing, and and uh, and I was so excited when I got the call just to be in that arc of a story. That story mm. was a great mm. story, um, and mm. you were fantastic, man. I mean, you you just have a, you, you have a, you have a stillness about you. You have a an introspective way that you you delve into your characters um, that is just really uh, beautiful to to watch. Uh, you're Thank from San you so Antonio. Much. You you're welcome, man. San Antonio, mm-hmm. Texas, huh? That's right. I was uh, born in Houston, Texas. Grew up in San Antonio before moving to uh, Los Angeles for 18 years now in New York. But yes, I, I grew up in San Antonio. Jock, when did you first um, know that acting was going to be a thing for you? That's a good question. I actually, when I was in, <laughs> growing up in San Antonio, I, uh, I, I, when I was in high school, man, I was really heavily into science and uh just really smart. I was the president of my Spanish club. as a National Honor Society, top 5% of my class. And I wanted to be a doctor, actually, ironically enough, and uh, or a dentist. I even had a medical symbol on, on, on my high school ring. That's how wow. sure I felt that was going to come to fruition. And I get to college, man, and for some reason, my first year there, 
uh, and in undergrad, I was just like, I don't know if I want to be in school now for the next 12 years, you know, studying. So I just, I'm just like, I just don't know if I want to, I just admit. So I'd always been creative, always kind of dabbed into, into music and, and, and God knows my mom, when I was growing up since middle school, she was like, you need to take some music classes or you need to take theater. I was like, I don't want to do that. No, no, it was fun. Like I like the idea of it. I'd yeah. act a fool at home, but I just didn't, just didn't think that that was my route, you know? So I get to college, I was at U of H and I said, screw it. I'm <laughs> now I'm gonna take a theater class. <laughs> and sure enough, fell in love with it. Fell wow. And the year before that, my mom had moved from San Antonio to uh, Los Angeles. And uh, I told her, I said, you know, I just took a theater class. I love acting. I think I'm going to come move out there with you and, and pursue it. And she said, come on, come on down. You know, come on so down. She was happy to see me after a year. And uh, I went there, I finished up at UCLA. Worked hard, man. I worked hard in that class. All in classes, always trying to be the best. And, uh, and it, and it paid off, but it's, mm. you know, uh, I was very competitive too. You know what I mean? Like even in the, in the classes, I wanted to be uh, the 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 favorite of the of the teacher, not yeah. not personality wise, but just like I wanted to be the example mm. that they use, or whatever the lesson was for that particular thing, and and uh, and it prepared me for when I started going out and auditioning. Mm-hmm. And uh, I booked my first audition out, which was a co-star on a show on ABC, and. Uh, and then my second one, <laughs> right was, out the just gate. Started. And then of course, yeah, right out the gate. But then you know, and then you got your the lulls. Yeah. You know what I mean, don't just, don't start feeling yourself. <laughs> and thank God I didn't, man. I was yeah. always able to keep, you know, yeah. Yeah. just like you know, yeah. let's see. But um, but you know, much like everybody, you know, I have a, a vision in my mind where where things are gonna go and where you're gonna take off, and mm-hmm. and it, it don't always go like that. It'd be on God's time, you know. Right. It, right. It, it's His rules, so. Right. But I just uh, put my head down and, and, and worked hard. And, you know, we've had some highs and lows, like I said. Um, but uh, and I know we'll get to this eventually, but came full circle, ended up playing a doctor <laughs> all these years later. Um, and I cannot find that high school ring, but that will really make this uh, this story. Yeah, you got to get that ring, that medical man. Civil. I got to find that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I guess in a way I, I, I fulfill that that prophecy. Man, that's that's a trip. You know, my sister's a doctor, married to an oncologist. And oh wow, okay. Yeah, she's a doctor and married to an oncologist, and and uh, he's he's now at uh, at Georgetown. Uh, he heads up a, a cancer research. He's he's. I had him on the show, and we were we were talking so much about what's going on uh, in the medical profession. Of course, I talk to him all the time, but I learned mm-hmm. a lot of things I didn't know. And uh, and you're right. Just talking to them about their process and the the uh, the amount of time it takes to go through undergrad and med school and the, the mm. rigors, man, brother, it's mm-hmm. it's 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 intense. What is it like for yeah. you playing a doctor uh, on television now, man? You you have uh, it has come full circle, and is it kind of surreal to literally be there playing a doctor? It's like a, it's a, it's a dream come true twofold. Yeah. Um, one, I'm, I'm on a show and, and on a network, you know, I worked on every network pretty much over the course of the last 16, 17 years. And somehow NBC always evaded me. I never, not even a co-star, nothing. And the first thing I get was this role two years ago, right. uh, playing Dr. Reynolds, this huge massive role. So here I am on this network that uh, I, f- I find is, is the biggest network in the business. And here I am playing a, a doctor, which I love, yeah. you know, so it's a, it's a, it's a dream job. It's, it's fantastic. And you, and you talk about the doctors who have put in all their time. What's really cool is I get to learn from uh, real doctors and, and nurses on, on set who are there with us side by side. In fact, when I'm doing my surgeries there, um, everybody who's, you know, in a mask in the scene with me, um, are they're, they're not even background actors they're all doctors and nurses mm. and the reason is you know if somebody even hands me a scalpel or whatever they want to make sure everything looks right and 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 everything's going well so and shout out to all of them right now mm-hmm. too because they were <laughs> they were on the front lines mm-hmm. uh here in ground zero here in new york city during uh the beginning of the pandemic and mm. 
So they're just 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 fantastic people, and and it's 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 a great experience. Yeah, it's got to be a, a great experience um, to be there in New York. And we're going to get to this because we definitely have to talk about you know how this pandemic you know shifted shifted a lot of things because mm-hmm. uh, I want to come back and delve deeper into into the show. Uh, but you had some pretty what are the big milestones that you had uh, before Masters of Sex was was Crash. Mm-hmm. Uh, the TV show yeah. Crash, and that was that mm-hmm. was. Tell me, tell us why that was so significant for you at that particular time. Well, that <laughs> and I got a couple of stories about that. Uh, <laughs> that was one where I, man, so many weird things. Uh, number one, I, I, I ended up booking that without having read the pilot, <laughs> and, and the reason is. <laughs> What happened was I, I got the sides and they were pretty straightforward, right? And I don't recommend, no actors, don't do this. Get all of the information you can, <laughs> right? But the sides were pretty straightforward. I, I go in and I do it and I get the call back. Mm. And, I, and I know I have the script and I'm like, mm. but I did well. Let me not change anything. Let me not pick up and add. Let me just do what I did. And boom, go in there for producers. Love it. Now I'm going to do the network test. I like, okay, cool. So don't read the script. Okay. Let me just, let me just keep going. (laughs) So I go to the network test and the network test was going to be the same day as the studio test. And this was on stars, by the way, which Mm -hmm. is, uh, this was their first original series, uh, pre pre power. All right. We were the first power. All right. (laughs) Not even close, but, uh, so I, I, I go, I do that network test and and uh i did okay and and i'm 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 walking out and i remember uh brian t a great actor i think he's on chicago med right now uh, he ended up on the show crash but he was like uh yeah we find out right away if we're getting a call back for the studio and i go oh okay cool and he said yeah i'm i'm I found out i'm coming back for my role Are you, did you get hear anything i was like no i haven't he's like oh it was a little awkward moment he's like okay well don't worry man i'm sure you're sure you get yours so I go, okay, so, uh, but I knew it was gonna be a couple hours later. So I just get in my car, go on back home and I'm calling my agent, call my manager, say, hey, what's up? <laughs> any, any word? <laughs> like, uh, no, but just sit tight. And I was like, okay, well, you know, we got an hour and a half. I gotta get back in the car and go. So they were like, okay, you know, so just waiting, waiting. And I called them again. They're like, no, no word. I'm like, damn. And I was like, this is how it goes. Like, you don't even hear nothing either way. You know what I mean? Right. So I was just so confused. I was like, I should have read that script. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm just like, damn. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm just sitting there and I'm trying to just calm down. I remember Elijah just being on my bed. Like, what do I do? Mm-hmm. And I just got in my car and just went back and just went to the Your studio. Your intuition. Your intuition just told you to go back. Yeah. It was just like, let, let me let me just go in. And I walked in. I said, hey, I'm coming. No, that's not it. <laughs> so I, I'm in my car. I'm on the way and I get a call. From my agents and they said casting had called one of the agents not even my agents some other agents and left a message on their cell phone during lunch so i spent the last two hours stressed not knowing that i had already had a call back and i'm in my car because like if i got that call i didn't want to not be there but i just went on faith man and sure enough I, I find out on the way and i'm like and i'm mad like how did that happen who you know whatever so i have to suppress all that get in there and 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 do the audition and and we get that and so that was crazy so finally i after i get the role i'm like okay let me let me see what this whole script's about right so i pick it up and i'm going through you know i'm looking for my character turning the pages and i'm just like okay maybe in the second half and i'm looking i don't see my character anywhere in there. <laughs> so i'm like man what is going on maybe i'll show up later in the season or something you know so and then the showrunner of the show is Glenn Mazzara. And Glenn Mazzara had just come off of The Shield. Mm-hmm. Uh, he uh, went on to do uh, Hawthorne uh, with Will Smith and Jada. And then he did uh, Walking Dead for a while. So Glenn's, Glenn's a big deal. Mm-hmm. So Glenn calls me and says, hey, Jocko, congratulations, man. Uh, this is big. You're going to be big, man. This is great. You did a great job. Uh, you, you're fantastic. We're going to move to New Mexico. That's where we're shooting the shows in New Mexico. I was like, OK, cool. I said, hey, Glenn. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, I noticed some of my characters not in the script. Do I, do I show up later? He goes, 
no, no, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? You're in, you're in every episode. I was like, yeah, but I don't, I don't see my name in there. And he's like, well, what, what script do you have? What do you have there? And I said, uh, I, I have, yeah, I have Crash right here. Right? He said, who wrote that version? And I, I, I'm not gonna say the name of who wrote that version, right? But he says, that's a piece of shit. Get that out of there. <laughs> throw it away. This is the first conversation I'm having with. Glenn. He said, throw that away. He said, who's your agent? I was like, oh, uh, so he said, fire your agent. Hey, man. Hey, da da da. Can we get Jocko the script? <laughs> yeah, he's got the old fucking version. Da da da. I was like, oh shit. I got somebody fired. And they said, I didn't even have the script. <laughs> that's I had the crazy. wrong one from the day one. So get it, and then I read it. I'm like, oh, okay, there he is. There's Anthony Adams. Okay, yeah, okay, this is now I get it. It's fantastic. So get to New Mexico, right? Yeah. And I knew that my character was going to be playing this character from the hood who was going to be driving a limo for this big uh, music producer, mm. this Phil Spector type, mm. you know, a uh, guy who was a little crazy, you know, every now and then there's some gunshots fired in his house in the hills, you know, just says so he might catch a case here and there. So it was it was a good story. So, but I get there in New Mexico, and we don't have that main character. And this is the face of the show. Yeah. And they have not cast this person yet. So I'm just waiting to see they're gonna cast. And they finally got the names down, and they said it was either gonna be Val Kilmer, Tom Sizemore, Harvey Keitel, or Dennis Hopper. I'm yeah. like, I will take any one of those. Yeah. But I was like, let it let it be let it be Dennis Hopper. Yeah. Please. Yeah. And sure enough, man, he signed on for that, and it was uh, it was good while it lasted. Yeah, they uh, they 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 messed that show up. <laughs> we had a we had a good first season, and I can't vouch for the second season. I don't know what happened. Wow, crazy. what did you learn from Dennis? <laughs> what did you learn from him? Well, first of all, the his ability to come in and just, for, here's one thing I learned to take he 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 liked to take his time. Mm. You know what I mean? He'd take his time. And if when he's, he would tell the first AD, you know, see, he'd get in there and say, Keith, God bless him. Keith would be like, uh, okay, we're ready. Everybody ready. And he would not check with the actors. Mm. And uh, I didn't think it was a big deal. I just felt like I just had to be there. And he's like, whoa, 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 hold on. You know, you got to check in with us, mm. you know, make sure we're good. And I've never felt like I was in the position to, to have to say that or do that. But mm -hmm. Um, just to see that for him, the process was, was serious mm. and that he had to, uh, take his time. And also I learned, uh, humility here. I am working opposite this Academy Award nominated brilliant actor, mm -hmm. um, who, uh, if you guys haven't seen, uh, uh blue velvet, mm. uh, go, go, go check it out. Kids. It's fantastic. This man is, uh, so, so humble. Mm. I remember when we were in between shooting season one and season two, I called him up and said uh, I was going to have a screening in Los Angeles because mm. we had moved back from New Mexico to Los Angeles in between. And I said, uh, I'm, I'm going to watch my favorite episode. I'm going to have a barbecue over. He said, I'm there, man. I'm there. I was like nervous to invite him. Yeah. And he said, I'm there. I was like, wow. So he was 74 years old, drives up to my house, pulls up in a Pontiac G6, had rims on it. <laughs> and he <laughs> and I didn't tell nobody. My mom barbecued. And it was all black people. I didn't tell nobody. Wow. And Dennis Hopper knocked on the door and came in and sat down and watched an episode that he had already seen, I find out. Wow. He just wanted to be around and share. And it was one of the greatest nights ever. And my friends were like, well, <laughs> we taking pictures. He's on the couch. <laughs> He's laughing at the funny parts of himself. He's yeah. laughing at himself. That was cla We were just like, this is crazy. You know, and... uh so just a lovable guy. And he, at the time, also was battling prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And when he started to really show, which was after the show was over, uh, and I saw how sick he was, that's when it really hit me. I was like, man, that man really loved to work. Mm -hmm. And this is the show he wanted to work on. And he battled and battled through mm -hmm. to show up to set every day mm. and uh, and do that. And that was... That was crazy, man. That, mm. that, 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 that blew my mind. And I was one of the last actors to be able to, to grace the screen with him. So it mm. was quite a blessing. What a, what a, what a impactful uh, uh, experience. Man, what, that's a great story, too. Thank you, man. It's, yeah. It's, I, that's yeah, a great story. So I'm blessed, man. I have, it's every, every one of those has something like that behind it. And yeah. I'm just thankful. Yeah. You were also on this great <laughs> show called The Last Ship. 
as uh, mm -hmm. Lieutenant <laughs> Carlton Burke, the head of uh, mm -hmm. Team VBSS of the USS Nathan James. Uh, that, was a big, that was a big role for you. Uh, you know, interesting, you're going to find this interesting. Uh, Antoine Fisher, as, as, as you may well mm -hmm. know with the movie, was a Navy Absolutely. man. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. my dad was a Navy man. And mm. the reason why my dad, I used to ask my dad, Dad, why did you choose the Navy? Why didn't you, why didn't you want yeah. to become a Marine? You know, kicking oh, ass. Oh, what did you taking say? It. He said, yeah. he, said, <laughs> he, said, he said, listen, son, who looks better in a Navy white than me? <laughs> <laughs> it was the uniform. It was the dress white. <laughs> Yo, Jocko, it. it was the uniform, man. I mean, the, you know, it's just hard to. The, the, well, how, how did you how did you enjoy that gig, man? That's another one. If you want another crazy story, I want them. <laughs> this is what this is that's about, another, man. Yeah, that that's a that's one where um, I, I go in and audition for this show now. Uh, I, I like talking about this one because I, I often would get asked by young actors, you know, uh, just, well, I'll end up telling them things that I, that I feel like would be inspirational. And, and, mm -hmm. and one of the things that we do as actors and as just as artists is we get in our own way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That biggest uh, hater that we have in our life is a voice in our head. It's yeah. with two. Uh, t short for a role or too black or, mm -hmm. you know, not uh, big enough, you know, not strong, you know, whatever. And this was one of those roles for me, uh, Lieutenant Burke, where the first thing I, I, I tried to do was try to get out, get out of the audition because this was a tough as nails, um, you know, Lieutenant who kind of keeps his guys in line, you know, and yelling at his guys and stuff. And I'm like, that's not me at all. Uh -huh. And I just feel like this might be a waste of time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Talking myself out of this. And uh, I remember I was uh, reading with an ac actor friend of mine uh, and she, you know, I was kind of messing up, like, just not being confident enough in that role. Yeah. And, and she's like, come on, man, you got this, man. Just do it, do it again. And I was like, all right, all right, cool. I was like, all right, cool. So go in there uh, and audition and I mess up a little bit. And I said, I'm sorry, let me, let me start again. And the lady's like, oh, don't worry about it. Uh, every, everybody's having a hard time with that part. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh, it's a thing to learn. You know, sometimes you're struggling with something, but other people are struggling mm. with it as well mm. if this is a specific hard thing to do so yeah. uh don't feel like you're alone in moments like that so i was like okay cool so uh i do it again and and knock it out and by the way this role was for um three to five episodes mm. okay. a guest star and so go in there do it and leave forget about it show goes away in fact they my agent called and said, yeah, they're, they're looking for a star for that role. And I'm a lot of things ran through my head. I'm like, for three or four, five episodes, y'all going to bring in, you know, who Tyree, who y'all going to bring in to do that? You know, that's like, come on, right, man, give right, a brother a on. shot. Like, all right, cool. So right. I put it out. of. I said, okay, TNT, that's what y'all going to do. Okay, go. I put it out of my mind. And uh, I feel like three weeks went by. It was a long one, man. And they called and, and said, yo, you're back in and, and they, they want you to do it. And I was like, come on, like, how? Me? Like, that, I didn't feel like, oh, okay, okay, cool. And I was excited. So I go on there and I'm having fun. And and that three episodes turn into the whole season. And before that season one wrap, they said, uh, don't go pilot season next year. We're going to lock you in. And that five episodes turn into five years, wow. five seasons over the last year. And I almost psyched myself out wow. for going in on that. And by the way, when I did Crash, the the show ended uh, just horribly. They brought they fired they fired Glenn Mazzara, uh, the the studio. They fired they fired most of the cast. I made the cut into season two. And <laughs> when I read the first two uh, scripts of of season two of Crash. I knew the show was over. I'm like, I don't know what they're doing, but this is not going not gonna last. And sure enough, it got canceled. Mm. And Elijah, it took me five years to book another series. And I, cause I thought that was it. Now Glenn was like, man, you're going, you know, you're opposite of this Hopper, you're going to be in Albuquerque for six years. And I, 
we did a year and a half and I was out. I, and, and for those two years, I'm not on people's lists. Mm. I'm, I'm not going in the room and nobody watched the show. So that momentum I built up those years prior going to crash and be leading up to me booking crash was gone. And I had a hard time getting in the room. I had a hard time getting in for casting directors who had seen me before. Yeah. So I had to rebuild and it took five years to get in that situation on the last ship. And while I was doing the last ship, now at this point, I'm a different individual. Yeah. I'm hungry. Yeah. And I'm like, so we had, uh, that's how Masters of Sex came along. Cause I was actually on the last ship during Masters of Sex. And there was this little window where we were not filming and Masters of Sex came along and I, I think it was going to be seven episodes and TNT, you know, the network was like, oh, he can only do three of another show. And I'm like, now, mind you, I'm a regular at this point on, on the last ship. I'm like, look, I've never had a role like this role on Masters of Sex. Right. This is why I'm doing this. I've always wanted to work on a cable network like HBO, Showtime. Yeah. And I said, I, I told my people, I'm doing this. Yeah. If I got to get out of my contract <laughs> with as a series regular and make a way less money <laughs> on, on the long run doing this, right, right. I will I'll leave all that on the table because I want these seven episodes. Yeah. We pushed and fought and they let me do it. And I got to go do that on Master Sex and then come back and do the last ship, man. That's so cool. it was that's incredible. And this says a lot about the integrity <laughs> that you have to the craft. Because mm. actors, you know, true thespians, we mm. want to do great work. Because we're thinking about the body of work, the legacy of the right. body of work that we leave behind, and that right. and that and that right there for your representation, those on your team, it it sends to those in the business. It sends a huge message to where your priorities are as an artist. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That that you would sacrifice that to play a meaningful role that is going to forever be a part of your artistic legacy. Mm. Uh, mm. And that, because you know that some people will not make that decision. They, they wouldn't fight for yeah. that. They might be like, you know, because, you know, sometimes like the agents and the managers, man, you know, don't mess up the money. Don't fuck up the money. Right. Exactly. You, you know, we, I, you know, and we, then, and, 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 right. Yeah, and they and they, and that's the thing. And not to say that this role. I mean, obviously, the last ship role was extremely challenging as an actor for me. I didn't even think I can get it. So yeah. it's not to knock Lieutenant Burke, but there was something like you said about the message uh, that Robert Franklin and and fighting for civil rights and telling right. this historical story and being on uh, you know a prestigious show that was nominated for Emmys. I'm just like this. This I, I got to do this and. Yeah. And it just felt right. And and I love that my team in this situation, because you're right, a lot of them could be like all about that check. Right. But in this particular situation, they were very supportive. That's great. And uh yeah. And it, and it felt it felt it felt right. It felt good. So That's great. That yeah. Good. You fall in love with the with the uh Libby, uh, Caitlin uh, Fitzgerald, uh in, mm -hmm. in the Masters of Sex. And uh <laughs> and she's a white woman for those of you uh, who don't know. So that's why this story uh, of you know at that time was very uh, very significant um this five-year period i want to talk about this for a little bit because man you know that when we have these bumps in the road that sometimes actors fold meaning it's hard to come mm. back meaning the 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 mm -hmm. the will the ambition to come back uh can wane uh it, Right. How did you, and there's a lot of actors out there who may be listening to this, who may be in that season of rebuilding, recreating, mm -hmm. reimagining themselves, mm -hmm. reinventing themselves. Mm -hmm. You went through a five-year reinvention. Mm -hmm. A few questions I have. What were some of the things you were doing? What, mm -hmm. what, what mindset were you what were you adopting so that when you came back it was like on fire because you like you said you came back and it was like on and popping you had your mojo mm -hmm. how did how what was that process like for you so that's a good good question um uh, for me uh i learned 
that I, I did not want to put my destiny in the hands of of other people mm-hmm. anymore. Like, I, and, I, and that's the big one of the biggest lessons I learned after crash. So mm-hmm. I started writing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I started because I put all my eggs in that basket. Yeah, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, the creator of the show said I'm I'm on, and that I'm going to be on the show for six years. Well, he was the first person they fired, so <laughs> my safety net was gone mm-hmm. <laughs> in months. So I, I can't I can't rely on that anymore. Um, this is a lot at stake. You know what I mean? When you when you, when you're putting in all of this this energy. So I, I started to learn how to write and produce and uh, surround myself with funny people. I love comedy, too. I haven't had a chance to do too much of it, but um, just surrounding myself with certain things and just staying creative. Um, and that was in. Yeah, that was it. That was within that five year period. Um, I hit re- reset. Uh, I ran out of money. Um, I, I moved uh, into my mom's apartment uh, and cried mm-hmm. one time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was there for because it was like, I mean, I had spilled all this up. Uh, I went to UCLA. All my friends were, were kind of looking at me as that uh, for that guidance and, and as that one who's kind of made it out of the class and and it just just slowed mm-hmm. you know what i mean so but uh it just invigorated me and i and i i never took my eye off that prize but it was very very cent- i'm glad it happened yeah because number one it made me light years beyond like a better actor yeah yeah it, it made me so much more of a better actor that when the time you know the last ship audition came along i did not i, I you know i thought i was over here with it but I had, yes. I had that lieutenant in me, right? <laughs> that I didn't that know. Life experience. So, yeah, I had, I had that stuff, and I, I'm just so, I'm so thankful for that, that period. And I, and I feel like, I'm, I'm in another one, mm-hmm. uh, believe it or not. With and, with, and but this time I'm in a, a, a big boat with everybody, mm. because this pandemic, uh, has slowed us all down, mm-hmm. all of our plans, mm-hmm. no matter how big or small. Uh, no matter how comfortable we we might have been, mm. and, uh, or uncomfortable, you know, it was it's all been changed. And so over the course of this pandemic, uh, it's been the same thing. I've just tried to stay. It's not easy, man. Yeah, it, it's it's not easy. It's it's nerve wracking and it's it's crazy, mm-hmm. and it's you know you just question so many things and question God and like what. And for the sake of everybody, and this this is this period is uglier than the the longer you know period. I hope hopefully that five years for me was long, but um, but at the same time, just trying to stay in touch with with like minded individuals mm-hmm. and check on them. I love helping people mm-hmm. and inspiring people and inspiring my friends and saying, hey, I just found this book that's inspiring me to write a, a pilot. Yeah. Um, what have you been up to? Um, and I got a friend who's, you know, dabbing in and out of, at, he was on shows, booked pilots and series. And now for the last three years, it slowed down for him. So he's now diving into finance. And I'm like, okay, well, don't, don't let go of your dream though. Yeah. Uh, while you're over there learning about finance, find a finance story that we can tell <laughs> in this business. Yeah. So, you know, just, so I'm checking in with him and I'm checking in with other ones and, and they're checking in on me and that having that team and those like-minded individuals uh, is really, really crucial as well. Yeah. Um, so I, I think if, if how to hang in there, uh, you know, for me it was writing, but I think that people need to always be ready to learn mm. and continue learning and to take classes. If you're a singer, take an acting class. Mm -hmm. If you're an actor, take a singing class, Mm -hmm. take a directing class. I implore all directors to take acting classes so that you know how to communicate with the people you're trying to get something from. Um, Because there's nothing worse than a director you're working with who's giving you line readings or just doesn't really understand. So I I love working with actor directors because they've experienced uh, what we go through Mm -hmm. and they know how to communicate. So Using these 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 periods of slowness uh, or resets to enrich your mind 
and hone your craft and check in on other people uh is is really crucial and what had you know kept me going for sure man i love that that's that is i love that it's it's so crucial what you just said the Mm -hmm. continuing to expand yourself and to deepen and, and and widen your talents uh you know some of the mentors that you know i'm sure we share some some of the same mentors and i've learned so many like I'm learning from you in this instance, and, and I bring them up because, like when I talk to a Bill Cobbs, uh, mm. uh, or a Marla Gibbs, or a Irma P. Hall, mm. you know, mm. our, our elders in the business. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, one of the things that they, they always share these, the highs and the lows, mm. you know? And when you talk about journeymen and journey women in the business. The one thing that I think is constant with the ones that I've gotten to know is the humility that you mentioned early on Mm. and this, Mm -hmm. this, this awareness of we are going to go through the highs and lows of life and, and having that long vision of Mm. I'm going through the journey but I'm going to continue to allow the journey to inform my creative path as well, my artistic path and how that informs the artistic path keeps you on your feet because it keeps us human. (laughs) You know, Irma P. Hall said something to me that was so significant. And I wonder if this, if, if this ever dawned on you, if you ever had a conversation with someone who posed the question to you. We did a film together. She said to me, Elijah, you're going to have to make a decision at some point. Mm. Do you want to be a great actor or do you want to be a movie star? Mm. And I said, I want to be a great actor. Mm. Because there's a, there, the intention is a little different. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with those who say, hey, I want to be a movie star. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. But I feel, mm-hmm. I, but, but for me, I was like, I want to be a great actor. And, and, mm-hmm. and so that's why I, I connected that to you going through this experience and you becoming a better actor because you set your intention to always, no matter what you're going through in your life experience, for that to inform your work. Mm-hmm. And I love what you said about the highs and lows. It reminded me of a, a professor I had in UCLA who said something very simple and he, and he, he was very random. He'll just be all over the place. It was a movement class too. So he'll just throw out just tidbits of stuff and you got to <laughs> yeah. catch it. And one thing he said is like, you know, when, when you book your first role or your, when you go book a, a big job, don't go to the bar and drink. He said, cause oh. then you'll want to go to the bar and drink when you don't. <laughs> and you don't want to end up in that dark place. He said, just, Ooh. And in that way, and that's how, you know, I, cause remember I booked those first two out the gate. I just, yeah, you know, so I'm ready for whatever life can, can throw at me. Cause you're just keeping a balance and that's how you ride the wave yes. of the highs and lows. Yes. But I have seen people do the contrary mm. and be up here and be up here with it mentally. Mm. And I've seen that, I, I've seen this and, and, and when this comes down, cause it will come down. It yeah. will come down, just even if it's a little bit. Yeah. When it when it comes down, it sounds cliche, but how do you process that? How do you handle that? Yeah. And I, I have a friend who doesn't seem to be dealing with that very well. And I tried to warn this friend because yeah. I saw this person just pop. pop I'm just like, just, just tranquilo, take it easy. And 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 it's 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 wear and tear on yeah. the individual. So I'm glad that I I, I, I love what she said and. Um, I, I see that I think it's crucial for uh, all artists out there to, to know to embrace the lows, embrace, just embrace the lows. it and, and yeah. just be, 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 become better, stronger, mm-hmm. go spend more time in the, in the gym, uh, get healthier, mm-hmm. learn about juicing, <laughs> learn, <laughs> learn, learn about your, your craft. You know what I mean? Just 
whatever. We were talking about juice a little while ago. But there's there's plenty there's plenty of stuff out there to to enrich you. And all, and, and and I love uh, what she asked about you being an, an actor or a movie star. It's like make a decision. First of all, find out why you're doing this. There was a period of time where I had to just really sit back and figure out, or or try to figure out why am I doing this. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I know when I got in, I, I mean, before I even got in, I was just like, I want to be on TV. I want to be famous. And then that <laughs> that didn't feel right. <laughs> that didn't feel right real fast. I just say, hey, wait, do I? I'm like, I don't, really don't want that. And and I'm still at that point where I, I, I'm, I don't know, but at least I'm open and I'm not trying to define. But I'm always searching. And I think that we, we need to be doing that, for asking why. Why, asking why are why. we doing this? And make sure that your, your heart's in it. Yeah. See, that's another thing. Your your heart got to be in it. I um, I had uh, a, a a lot of friends who have traversed the SNL route, end up on Saturday Night Live, and that is a that is a a mind f being on that show. Yeah. I mean, first of all, people a lot of people understand you have to be out of this world talented. You have to not only be funny, but you have to be able to sing dance, <laughs> act, you know what I mean? Do improv, rap, <laughs> no matter what your color, you got to always be creative and be on your toes and for almost very little reward. Yeah. Because those actors, uh, compared to other actors on t- television shows, don't get paid a lot because it's come on late at night on Saturday, I think, and right. they don't have, I don't know why they don't, but they just don't. Um, so watching them uh, struggle mm. uh, sometimes mentally, and I saw one leave, and uh, he was at the top mm. on that show, and he 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 left, and he he had to do what he had to do, and I couldn't imagine, you know, getting to know what he was going through, I would not even imagine him staying in there, yeah. you know. So point is, you know, you might find as you get older, this if something don't feel right, you know, you got to make a move. You got to make a move. You got to make a move. Either go 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 harder mm-hmm. or. Or if your heart's not in this, then you know you, you gotta be happy. Yeah, you know, and I think that's I think that's crucial too. And I tell people, I wish I could perform, sing, dance, do all these things. You know, loss of an- anonymity, and you have friends who've lost their anonymity. You've lost a, a degree mm-hmm. of your anonymity. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's a, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a network show. You walk outside, people know who you are. They they see your face. Mm-hmm. And I always say. I accept what comes along with the potentiality of loss of anonymity. However, mm-hmm. I prefer to do the work, serve the audience that's there, and still have my, you know, have my anonymity. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. that would be have my the privacy. Perfect, yeah, yeah, the privacy. Yeah. That would be my perfect that was, scenario. That was, right. But it doesn't right. come with. This the more successful you become in the craft, the more uh, the more yeah. your anonymity, you know, you lose. Uh, yeah. How do you grapple with that? Well, that's another thing to think about when you're asking for this. You know, uh, careful what you wish for. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I I had to learn early in the days of MySpace when I first did Crash when I would just get weird messages for people who were suddenly interested in, in shit about me that I'm just like, that's, that's, that's weird. That's really weird. You, you know? So, and it, so I'm, I just, we get nervous and I still am about people who have an unhealthy interest in, in aspects about you that just like that's that's a that's a bit scary you know what i mean so i've always been a bit guarded since then and, and have my my guard up like for that like I, i'm just i don't know I, I not to knock fans i love fans and i need fans i love pictures i don't think i've ever turned down a photograph or autograph if i come out somewhere out, out of an event and fans are waiting on somebody and i get no attention uh that's going i'm gonna cry <laughs> so I, I i love it but there is a level of just having to be careful yeah. with you know certain people and that part of it is is just a little a little scary but again you know it's just it comes with the territory yeah you know it's not like being a marine <laughs> you know that's dangerous yeah, you know, in a whole nother way and, and many 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 jobs a sanitation worker all of it uh, yeah. a doctor during covid a nurse so you know that's one of those things either you know you decide that you're going to serve like you said serve your audience 
and uh, uh, be a vessel through which they could learn mm -hmm. stories and see beautiful stories and pay that price um, and then see if it's worth it, you know? Yeah. But yeah, that definitely is something that you got to kind of just kind of watch. You got to watch. I mean? Yeah. You got to be on, got to have, yeah. have your head on the swivel, as they yeah. say. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is, you, you gave me a perfect value, you, by the way, uh, by the way uh, speaking of uh, referring back to uh, doctors, because uh, mm. you, uh, again, are on this great show, New Amsterdam. Uh, can you share a little bit uh, about the history of the show for those who are uh, going to become new fans of the show based uh, after they see this and hear this interview? Yeah. So the show New Amsterdam is based on the oldest public hospital in America. It's so old. It's called Bellevue and it's right in the middle of Manhattan. It's still still there. It's so old that uh, it's older than the United States. Wow. So the founding fathers before they... Uh, signed that Declaration of Independence, they made sure that we had a, a hospital and uh, had a little bit of a reputation over the, the decades of uh, being uh, an insane asylum mm -hmm. uh, because it was known for its, its mental health uh, ward. But um, the, in reality, it's a state-of-the-art hospital that has uh, capability to handle infectious diseases. One that we've come into recently, if the President of the United States fall ill, that's the hospital they're going to take them to. So, so much history there. Mm -hmm. And there was this um, uh, doctor named Dr. Eric Manheimer, who in the 90s, for 15 years, he was the medical director. He ran the hospital. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a book called 12 Patients, Life and Death at Bellevue Hospital. And it was, uh, it, it, was it's in, it, it was insane, the mm -hmm. amount of stuff that he had to go through just to help patients, mm -hmm. the, the red tape bureaucracy, this uh, politics. And so he, he writes this book and our uh, creator of the show, David Schulner and Peter Horton, executive producer came across it and they teamed up and decided to make a, a series about it. So what makes this show different than others is that it is based on a true story. Uh, I play the head of the cardiac surgical department and how I ended up getting the job, um, not, not in real life, uh, my character ends up getting that job is when uh, the guy who plays Dr. Max Goodwin, Ryan Eggle, he comes in first day, his first day on the job, and he's looking at all the numbers and he's, he's looking at stuff and he, this hospital is just in shambles. It's a mess. So the first thing he does is fire the entire cardiac surgical department. Mm. And he, he looks back at the numbers and he realized that my character was a little bit different. And he goes, he, you know, he sees that I didn't um, just do unnecessary surgeries to try mm. to make money for the hospital. I actually put the patients first. Mm. And so he calls me back up as I'm literally packing up my office. This is in the first episode. And he goes, so I notice, you know, you, you operate differently. And I give my reasons and say, you know, I'm not in this for, you know, I, I'm in this because I care, you know, and so I'm not going to do an unnecessary surgery. It's just, we don't, if I don't make that quota or make that money, it is what it is. Mm. And he says, well, I want you to stay. And not only do I want you to stay, I want you to run the department. And so that's how our relationship forms on the show. And yeah, wow, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> you, uh, the actors are on the show are phenomenal. You guys have a wonderful mm. chemistry. And I've, I've heard some Im uh, interviews about you talking about the, the camaraderie uh, that you have mm. on the show. Uh, and I know David Schulner, <clears throat> he, he, he talks about how the show centers around social issues, medical issues. Uh, there's some issues, particularly when it comes to race, mm -hmm. that are significant uh, in, in this show as well. When you, you had three episodes to, to shoot before when the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. what, was, what, what was going on? Can you just, what happened? Yeah. So, well, what happened? You you mean the three? Because we had three more episodes left to shoot Le in left, season two. Left when yes. they when they when they shut us down. And what's crazy is, we had written an episode about a pandemic that breaks out and it overwhelms the hospitals in New York, and we call extra help. We get other doctors to come to the hospital. We wrote that over a year ago. Wow. And we finally get wow. around to filming it and a real pandemic breaks out while we're filming it. Wow. And the doctor played by Daniel Day Kim, 
who we end up calling to come help us out in the hospital actually catches COVID while we're filming and then the production shuts down. That's right. Talk about art imitating life. <laughs> Brother, it was very surreal. And I incidentally, my character had uh, left left uh, the uh, show during that time. So I was not there for those three episodes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, we, we did have a breakout uh, there on set. And fortunately, everybody is healthy and, and fine today, including the star of our show, uh, Ryan Eggold. He yeah. got sick. He just revealed recently. Um, so that was that was really wild to see that and to see that really happening. So we um, we've had to revamp. Um, we have to obviously change some stories because our show is based on a reality, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and our show is based and we literally shoot in, in, in Bellevue Hospital uh, sometimes. And, and that, that was ground zero for this on, on planet Earth. Mm. Uh, this was the worst place, you know, and um, it's it's crazy. So uh, the, the production has started back up. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't reveal whether or not my character or how you will see my character again. But um, uh, it, it's it's going to be really interesting uh, getting I, I think this will be one of the few shows where you get a really uh, a different perspective of mm -hmm. what has happened with this pandemic, because we all have our own personal stories. And, and God knows that we've had way too many people that we've lost mm -hmm. during this time. And um, and we hear a little bit of the stories of doctors and nurses and what they had gone through. But with our show, you'll get to really see it. And again, the people who are the, some of the doctors who are the producers on our show and who mm -hmm. are there side by side with us were they weren't working on our show during the pandemic. They were they were there, you know, on the front mm -hmm. line. So we're going to tell some some real stories. And, and I think the world will get to see uh, the type of things that, that we've had to grapple with and that we're still grappling with because. This is not over. This is not over. Yeah. You're right. Uh, I heard you gave uh, the cast. You guys gave some of your uh, PPE equipment uh, from the show to 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 folks out there. That's that's awesome. Yeah, it it, it, it's, it was really strange being here in, in 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 New York while it was all going down. And and one of the first things we did was uh, call up hospitals who did, had shortages, and you know we had boxes of our stuff. We gave it all away. Mm. You know, we were figuring out, you know, if we ever come back to filming, we'll figure out how to how to get it done. You know, mm. we'll 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 deal with our masks. But we, you know, we got to contribute to what's going on in, in reality. So um, and in that way and in many other ways, you know, we've tried to be there for the local communities in Brooklyn. Shout out to Kings County Hospital in Brooklyn. That's where we shoot uh, mm. a lot, a large portion of our show normally. Um, but since the, the pandemic hit, they've had to build some uh, new stages mm -hmm. and uh, find some other places elsewhere because the last thing our production will want to do is be in a way while yeah. uh, people are saving lives, you know. Yeah. So. What's the biggest thing that you've learned about the American healthcare system by doing this show? Wow, man. Um, it's disturbing. <laughs> I don't even know. It, it's little stuff that when you watch our show, you have to pay attention because... Um, sometimes we'll have, uh, it'll feel a bit Aaron Sorkin-ish mm. where we're, we got those fast words walking and talking, <laughs> yeah. but we're dropping, dropping gems. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that I, I learned was that you can negotiate your bill. Yeah. That's, I didn't really <laughs> blue, understand blue, blue that. My mind. You can actually little like <laughs> yeah. barter, negotiate your bill. You, you can, yeah. Wow. You know, just. Uh, I, it, it's, I don't know how, uh, it, it, you know, I'm not going to say it's going to be a walk in the park. And if you have a $6,000 bill, you could just pay 600, keep it moving. No, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a conversation you yeah. could have. And, yeah. and, you know, and that's how, that's how it, it should be because a lot of times you go in and end up having to have a surgery or something. And you're not always, you know, able to know what, what mm -hmm. something's going to cost. So you think it's going to be one thing you wake up and your bills this long, you right. know? So, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy, but just also, uh, learning the struggle that that doctors go through to uh, try to get things done and procedures done for for patients um, mm. is it's really it's really shocking. But at the same time, you know, while we're telling these stories, uh, we're also giving these heartwarming stories. You know, we uh, like like other shows. You know, we have a problem and we try to find a solution mm -hmm. by the end of the episode, and that always feels good. I always tell people you're going to need a, a box of Kleenex. 
every episode <laughs> because uh, we we dive in. And if we if we don't get to it, I'm sure we would. But it is every. Um, well, actually, no, they changed it. It was uh, Tuesday nights after This Is Us. Um, but uh, you can catch up on seasons one and two on Peacock okay. app and also on Hulu and NBC.com. That's great. I mean, you um, you got a love interest uh, that's uh, taking you into some uh, new directions, too. So I can't wait to see how that unfolds. Yeah, that's we got it. We got to see because as of as of now, where we left off is he decided to 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 marry uh, Evie, yes, his sir. fiance, and uh, they've gone to uh, San Francisco because she had a job offer there. Where she's a lawyer. She was a lawyer at Bellevue at the hospital. Mm-hmm. We're working for the hospital, but she she decided to take that job. And where we left off, Reynolds decides to to go with her. So. We got to see what happens. Let's see what happens. It's getting juicy. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> You right, you right, and I just certainly want to talk a little bit about your your personal projects as well. You write, you're producing, and 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 I love that you're doing that, man. I love that you are uh, doing more than you know, and you could just be fine doing what you're doing, and that'd be great. Uh, but you are expanding and you're developing projects, and we need more of that. Anything you want to talk about that you're excited about? I know you. I know you said you like comedy. You got a, You got some comedy uh, yeah. popping off. Some some projects. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> that you could. I'm trying could, to figure out what I can say. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in it. Well, it's drama. What I'm in the. I don't even want to share. Yeah, you got to keep it. You got to keep it. Because <laughs> I'm so, But but no no. Well, I I, I got I have a. I have a a, a drama that um, I'm in the beginning stages of, uh, which uh, right now I think is a, a limited series or a series. Mm. And um, it's about prison reform mm. and it takes place in, uh, in the fifties. And, it, and, it, and it's about a real, it's a real prison here in America. And I'm, I'm gonna leave it at, yeah, at, yeah, at that's, that's, I'm, that's but so I'm really juicy. excited. My, yeah. my, main, my, my main character is a female. Mm. And it's uh, based on a true story. And I came up, uh, I actually came across this story while I was researching for a fictional story mm-hmm. about a certain location uh, that exists. And uh, and my fictional story takes place in the future. So I was like, let me dig in the past and see what went on here and how this place came about. And I found this story and it just, man, it just pulled me. And I'm like, this is, this is crazy. And yeah. I cannot believe this has not been told. That's why I'm, yeah, <laughs> but uh, hopefully, I'm 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 in the process right now of, of attempting to get rights to a book, and yeah. once I do, I'm, I'm I'm shot it from the mountaintop. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it's great. But but speaking of but speaking of writing, it's like yeah. that that and other things for me have always just come out of nowhere. If I try to sit down and just write with no inspiration or, or, you know, that's, that's, that's difficult, but it's always life experience. So I'm looking for, for diamonds and fine gold, Yeah. you know, and, and looking over here and, and, and talking to people, yeah. you know, I, 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 when I found an idea, the first person I called was my friend who's a screenwriter and say, what do you think of this idea? You know, you obviously, talk to anybody it could be your mom your brother your cousin your best friend yeah. uh and i did that too but but calling him was crucial for me for him to stamp wow i yeah. wish i had that oh like, okay cool <laughs> i got the right thing and it just that that felt i was like okay this this is crazy right yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. that's the thing and then when i get uh, you know a little caught up creatively um having people you can kind of just say hey remember that thing i was like what do you what do you think of this or that yeah. and just and that's why I'm saying that support system is, is really crucial. I don't know if I could do that alone. You know what I mean? So I just sit here during the pandemic and just write it out. <laughs> Some people can. Yeah. Some people could just, ah, just it, it comes out. But um, I got to, I got to, I like to put pieces together, puzzles. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, okay, what's the history behind this book? I dug about the author. I know I'm speaking so vaguely about it, but I, I did research on the author of the book and found a, something else that's, Wow. crazier than that story I was reading. So I'm just like, this. let me get on this. Let yeah. me focus on this. So I, I love the development the process. I love it. I love the collaboration development project uh, process. Yeah. You know, we got a film right now, me and 
some of my uh, partners, is, you know, that were that's making the rounds, the comedy, you know, uh, family comedy that we've been just, you know, tweaking over the years. And finally, we, we got it to a level where we're like, okay, it's ready to go out. And it, the response has been great. We're going to, you know, it's, it's going to make like it that happen. Feeling, is Nothing it? Nothing like that feeling, man. Just, <laughs> and, you know, and, and it's, it's, I got a feeling we're going to do something together at some point. But you love music oh, too. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You love music too. We I I got to connect the dots with the music, bro. Uh, <laughs> tell me about the music. Are you involved in music? Are you, you know, I I've, I've heard that you do some management with with uh, musical artists. <clears throat> are you are <clears throat> you continuing to to um, mold your musical uh palette as well right now? Yeah. Oh, the music business. That's a whole <laughs> We might have whole to beast. You know what? This, this is gonna be the setup for our comeback, for our comeback episode. We're gonna delve particularly yeah. specifically in the music business because we have we both have history, some you know, uh, tons of history Yeah. that. But give pepper us a little that's bit about a great, with that. Yeah, that's actually a great idea because I haven't ha- sat with anybody and had a music conversation like this yeah it's, it's been always all about acting and obviously because i've i've been able to make a living somewhat in me doing the acting and I've, I've produced nothing ultimately musically of of you know something that people can uh right it's actually funny my first thing that i did was uh on the show crash uh the right mm-hmm. writers called me up and said so uh you know my character is a driver I, I booked this guy. He's a driver. <laughs> and the writers called me and said, so you're going to be doing this huge rap performance, right? And this is coming. This is like in a couple of weeks. And I was like, yeah, okay. Uh-huh. And they said, yeah, so uh, you, you could rap, right? And I was like, "And no. But I was, at the time, no, I'm I'm really good now. Are you good? <laughs> but I, I, I said, yeah, I said, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, okay, cool. Because look, we could write it. And it sounded like a bunch of white writers writing that's a, or it can come from you. Right. You know, we wanted to be uh, this moving just from the struggle. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got this, man. And I hung up. I was like, what? And I just saw this opportunity uh, that much like my my whole way into acting, like I kind of mess around with it at home. That's how I was for me for music. Never took it seriously, man. And so. Uh, just a few weeks later, man, I had a show, a song that I uh, co-wrote with my, my buddy, Miles Gregory, and I produced on my laptop and I'm performing it. And I thought it was okay. Mm-hmm. Still today, I think it's okay. And, but the response from the audience was nuts, man. It was nuts. It was really cool. So uh, that just popped in my head. As I said, I've done nothing to, to, to move people yet. And mainly because I don't put stuff out. Okay. You know, I sit on my music, man. I'm just like, it's time and Why are you sitting on it, Jocko? Why are you sitting on it, Well, it just, it depends. I, I get the, the weird, pro- I get involved in weird projects. And like, so the re- I can't just release the project. Yeah. It has to come with a story and explanation and a, and a TV show around. <laughs> so it just be complicated. Yeah. So that being said, where I've learned a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's a that's a that's a tough business. I've had an offer. I got a uh, you know I got an offer from a major label for a single for. I'm doing the Trump thing now. I've been watching it too much. <laughs> this is, this, I can't believe I didn't. Damn, stop it. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, uh, and, that, and that offer was for an artist that I, that I was managing. So I learned quite a bit, and I'm looking forward to to having that conversation there, so I could learn from you as well, and you know, see 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 what's up. But I, I'm looking forward to getting back in the music. My plan was in the last quarter of this year to dive back in because it's been years it's been it's been five years it's been five, years. It's been five, it's been five years. years since i wow. put my heart and soul into it so i'm back so you, i'm ready so you back so you have some music in the can that you that you yeah that you, I, that I, you I, could put out at some point or you're going to be doing a bunch I, of new stuff the music that i have in the can was a, a character for, from a from a story that okay. I was going to put out, okay. and and so the timing of that and how if ever that happens is very important because mm-hmm. I don't want people to misinterpret the stuff they hear mm-hmm. <laughs> and okay. think that that applies to, to so and because I'll be like I'll go back and listen to it and be like this is fire right but I can't just throw they'll be like Jocko. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I, I just got to. I feel you. Yeah. I got to. You know, Timing. It, just, it don't match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, but what I need to do is find my voice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I got to find my voice outside of that character and that show and that mm. group and, and outside of me managing artists and whatever and, and see. And I don't know quite what that is yet, but, you know, it'll it'll come. Yeah, I can't wait to have that. It's going to be a great conversation. Well, you know, you got a lot of talents. I know you cook. We're going to have to talk about that when we come at oh, another yeah. time because I know you mean on you oh, mean yeah. on the grill, man. Cooking is, uh, and I have a passion for cooking as well. So we got a lot to talk about when we come back. Uh, let's do let's do a music cooking I thing. Think that's what I, that's what I'm thinking. I think the next conversation let's yeah. do music and, and food. Music and food. <laughs> And even if you, um, I'm doing a couple of virtual interviews with some chefs, so we might even do a music thing where you even, you know, you put a recipe on some folks, let them know, like, you know, how, how Jocko Sims really gets, you know, gets down. It can happen, ladies uh, and gentlemen. I'm, I'm, I'm all about it, brother. I just, I, I love, I'm from Texas, and I would be, if I was not an actor, I would be 365 pounds because I love, I would, I would, yeah, I'd be, yeah. be crazy. Uh, so I kind of watch. <laughs> I can do a lot better, but I kind of watch because I have to. I just, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's food is a beautiful thing. Yeah, man, mm -hmm. it's cooking. Well, I got a few more questions to ask, and and um, and uh, I appreciate your time. This has been uh, thank you an, an incredible, incredible time with you, bro. I thank wrote a you. book. Likewise, I wrote a book. I wrote oh, a book man. called uh, "The Fine Art that. of Romance." Oh, my brother. Okay. It's on Amazon. It's going to the audible. Uh, the audio book is coming out. All right. And uh, so we haven't even done any heavy promotion yet. We're just, we're just, you know, just kind of people are just, they're like very interested mm -hmm. in this thing. Why? Mm -hmm. Because that image is an interesting image, and, that, and, and it's an image that basically begs the question. Uh, Men want to be honored and adored. I have a counterpart book where the guy, it's called Matters of the Heart, a bachelorette's handbook, where the guy's on his knees and he's, he's asking for the woman's hand. And so I mm. flipped the script on this one where mm. it's about men honoring themselves, about men mm -hmm. becoming more vulnerable to mm -hmm. attract the woman who adores and honors him, and he rises her up so that she sits stands next to him on his throne, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, as king and queen. So I have to ask you this question. As mm. a bachelor, I I'm assuming you're a bachelor. Mm -hmm. I'm asking everyone as we book in these interviews, how would you describe the essence of courtship from your perspective? Mm. I, first of all, will start with what you said about lifting, you said something about men lifting themselves up to, uh, and, and, and I think before courting anybody, before falling in, in love with anybody, um, much like we were talking about with the business of finding out what it is that you want or why you're doing something, you better have all that lined up. You gotta know where you're going, Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Before you spend time um, giving yourself or, or getting a woman to give themselves, you got to have all all that mm -hmm. together. That's 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 what I've I've learned the most in, out, of, out of being in relationships. But because it's real easy to just go dive into something yeah. head first and be like, oh, this is great, you know. And then you get to know somebody, or they get to know you, and it's a it's a it's a whole other thing. So. Um, for, for me, it's been, you know, let me work on, on me, mm. you know, before I, I, I bring into my space, yes. you know what I mean? Let me have this together so that I can give her everything mm. that, uh, I'm capable of, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, that's, that's where I'm at with that. Yeah. Because your whole, your whole and you and you it, because the wholeness is is so so important you know if we if we're not whole then how can we be all right 
how can we be in a position to attract a whole woman? You blame them for 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 things, or you're not you're not able to um, you know uh, see or deal with certain situations. If you know, just you're, you're right. Being being whole and and understanding that from that perspective before you dive in is very crucial. Very crucial. And, and, and the authenticity part is, and, and that's the one thing that I think as artists, we have this intention to excavate our, 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 ourselves, to get to the root of ourselves, to be more authentic with ourselves. Now, translating that authenticity when we date is really what the book's about, you know, like just mm -hmm. being that honest, you know, if, if everyone could be as honest as we are in our pursuit of characters <laughs> in our mm -hmm. everyday life mm -hmm. on both sides, you know, just the, the complete transparency of like, this is where I am. This is what I'm interested in. This is what, this is what, you know, uh, I desire. Uh, it would uh, cause for a lot less uh, friction between men and women. I'm going to, I want to mail this book to you, Jock, because, uh, when we come back again, I would like us to delve deep into this book uh, because, man, it's an homage to my brothers. And it's, uh, it's been a, a beautiful uh, way of communicating uh, these ideas. And the ladies are learning a heck of a lot. Uh, because I'm speaking to guys. Oh yeah. Well, oh yeah. I'm speaking to guys. Ladies, okay. wanna, they, ladies want to know how you know we speak. You look. It's so funny because uh, first of all, what comes to mind is is think like a man. Yeah. Um, and then also uh, speaking of shows, there there was a, a show, the comedy show that I, I had an idea about uh, years ago, appropriately called "All Guys Are Assholes," and <laughs> <laughs> basically. <laughs> What it what it was was you know you were going to be able to in a comedic way dive into this world of guys being guys, yeah. partners talking with each other, uh, those conversations that I, I wanted people to watch this and I wanted guys to laugh and be like wow yeah we do say that and that's crazy and I can't believe wow they they put that on the thing and I wanted women to be like nah no way you know what I'm saying. And and it's it's just giving people a chance, and particularly women, uh, a chance to to see, you know, the good and the bad. Yeah. You know what's what's going on, um, with 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 men. So it's it's interesting. It seems like that that's an opportunity with your book for 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 women to to learn about the the man psyche. That's right. And God knows that uh, we can. Both sexes can can use any opportunity we have to, to right. learn about the other. That's right. So that's great. I will I'll, I'll support it. I'm, I'm looking forward to reading it. Absolutely. You never know what can come of it. Uh, one last question. Your mm -hmm. vision for now. Your vision for the future. My vision for now, I guess, would be more like a uh, an, an immediate thing. And um, when I'm passionate about something, I I, I literally can't sleep. Like in a sense where I'll get to sleep, and I may wake up at three a.m. with ideas, mm -hmm. and I I'm like shit because <laughs> mm -hmm. I know I gotta get that phone and get the ideas, and that may last two hours, mm -hmm. and I'll get back to sleep at five. So, uh, point being, the now is uh, what I'm immersed in creatively, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm I'm really excited about it. And um, I'm just going to keep trucking uh, until everything's in order mm -hmm. and uh, we can get that off the ground. So that would be now. And you said, uh, what was the question about vision, the future? The vision for the future. Vision for the future. My vision for the future is to just uh, come more into my own, uh, to continue to uh, inspire people. Um, I think that's probably the most gratifying aspects mm -hmm. of being blessed and, and, and able to do uh, what you and I do as artists is to inspire people. And as long as I'm doing that in some way and influencing people to be better as themselves and be better to other people, then uh, I, I, I can be happy. Mm. And uh, that's what I would hope and pray for for my future, that I'm able to do that uh, on whatever scale, larger, mm. larger, small. Mm. Man, I appreciate you, brother. <laughs> uh, you come from good stock. 
<clears throat> and when you know how when black people say that, uh, that means that your parents, uh, your family, they raised you uh, with love and integrity. And, um, you know, shout out to your family and your, and your peoples, man, because they, they, uh, they gave birth to a great soul. And so uh, you now are, are, are flourishing in so many ways. And it's just the beginning of, of this incredible life that you are sharing with us. And we're just so happy to, to get to see uh, wonderful glimpses of it on screen. And, and uh, I'm happy to know you. I uh, can't wait to, to see you in person again and, and, and have a meal and, and connect. It's amazing how during COVID, uh, this opportunity to, uh, this piece of downtime that we have, I've been able to connect with you in a way that uh, I've never been able to connect. Uh, it's just, you know, you know how it is, timing and, 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 and everything mm -hmm. else. But the fact that it's happened in, in this way is, is a blessing and uh, this is going to be a blessing to so many people who are, are tuning in. So uh, I am uh, humble. I'm grateful. And uh, man, I'm rooting for you uh, as we come out of this situation. And, and, and that whatever the new normal is, uh, that you continue mm -hmm. to have plenty of opportunities to share your talents with us. Thank you very much. Well, Elijah, thank you so much. And uh, likewise to you, my brother, I'm humble. Uh, I, I, I was I jumped at this opportunity. I'm glad I see you're doing great things. Uh, I'm glad to be a part of it in any way. And um, I look forward to seeing you in person, my brother. And uh, I look forward to our next chat. You get that music and that cooking conversation going, my man. And thank you so much for those kind words. I really, really appreciate it. Mm. God bless you. The Fine Art of Romance, A Bachelor's Handbook by Elijah Rock. It's wonderful, long ago and far away. Isn't it a pity? Shall we dance? How long has this been going on? I love you. Yes, I do. I want to be with you, darling, the whole night through. Please believe me. I'm telling the truth. Come this evening. Let's settle down. Come have a drink with me, baby. I'm the new kid in town. Please, please believe me. Darling, I'm mad about you. Your lips, your hair, the arc of your brow, those curves on your hips, the touch of your smile. Your hands that tickle back of my spine. I got the answer, Lord, give me the sign. I love you, this I know. Come on, let's get out of here, darling. We got places to go. I'm mad about you. Oh, I'm, I'm telling the truth.